Hey everyone, it's been a little while, so I wanted to put together a video of some of the stuff I've been learning recently um, on network automation. So today I'm going to write a Python 3 program. It's going to utilize NetMiko, Jinja 2 templates, some YAML files, and we're going to take full advantage of the multi-threading process to automate the network devices. This particular example here, we're going to be automating two VRF deployments on some Nokia 7750 routers. And that you can definitely take this script and everything you see today and translate it to anything that's supported by NetMiko, uh, being Arista or Cisco, Juniper, or what have you. Um, I wanted this video to kind of guide you guys and show you how to automate something starting today. There's a lot of examples out there. Um, I just don't think there's anything that kind of puts it all together and puts all the pieces into place to show you how to uh, create the files, create the Python script, uh, kind of structure your your folder and then actually configure devices at the same time. Um, so first we're going to just create a directory, set up a structure, start the Python 3 program, we're going to put the ginger file together, put the YAML file together as well, and then we're going to test it all uh, during the process. And then finally we'll just validate that the network device has the configuration. And uh, First and foremost, I guess I'll show you guys the network topology. So here is here's my virtual lab running EVNG. I've got a just a layer three Cisco switch connecting to two 7750s here. Uh, router one is 10.0.0.230 and router two is 2.31. So first things first, to start with, we'll start with the uh, file structure. So. Let me pull down my folder here. So you can see there's nothing in here, just my task folder, or my task text, which is what you see here in the background. So we will create a couple different things here. Um, so let's create the Python folder, or the Python program. Uh, so we'll just say, um, it's called pi. Oops, seems like I have. I'm not on my actual Linux machine. Say pi glue that pi, and then we'll create um, the template, Ginger 2 template, as well as a YAML file. So for the YAML files, since we're configuring two verbs, two VPRNs in the Nokia world, we'll say vrf.yaml. And so let's start with the Python program. Let's, let's get through this as quick as possible here. Um, I actually will be running these on Linux with two machines. So environment three. Okay. Okay, so we're going to import YAML, we're going to import uh, Jinja2, import time, although we may not use it, um, from NetMiko, import uh, NetMiko. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with NetMiko too much, but I highly recommend it. Um, I, do see, I do still see a lot of people using Telnet and uh, using uh, NetMiko's predecessor, but uh, really just think you need to make the jump here. And then we'll input threading. So we'll also just call out our YAML file. So we know what it is. It's going to be verf.yaml. That's that file that we just created over here. And then our Jinja templates. So pretty basic so far. Then I kind of regurgitate this code all the time at work and at home on different projects. Just create this function here, conf gen. You see a lot of examples out there kind of doing the same thing. So call some variables out here. And, uh, so we'll open up that Jinja template. 
and old faithful um, just kind of read it out uh, so we're gonna have to render it here pretty soon so our template here now just gonna read it and this is what we're actually once we render it this is how we're gonna send all our variables to configure our devices um, to fig list and our template uh, so now let's create actually establish that connection with NetMiko um, NetMiko say host and vars and we'll extract the host IP out there from our template file and then uh, in my in my case here I'm using uh, Alcatel SROS uh, which is supported by NetMiko and then uh, say admin equals I'm sorry say user and password now I probably recommend you do these using get pass or something like that if you're doing uh, running this in production so that you don't uh, you know hard code your password and your username in here I'm going over the line here but that's okay then just have a way to extract and print out what we do. We can print this out to the screen here in a bit. Um, and that's going to be all of our, yep, everything that we're going to send out to the device via our SSH connection. Now, I think in previous version of NetMiko, or you would have to do something like um, disconnect, but I don't think that's the case anymore. So, connection should uh, log out after you're done running your script. So, we can just print this. We'll probably want to print it out so you can see what's going on. Um, so, well, let's see, it was print out a uh, five or something, I don't know. And we'll pull, pull that host out. Yep, yep. And then the actual output, which is this guy calling out the template, which is here that was rendered by Jinja using the variables. So, um, okay, that should just kind of dump out to the screen once we're ready for it. And now let's get a little deeper here. So we'll open up that YAML file. Uh, oops. So, and we'll read it. YAML, load it. Now this is where I think this gets pretty cool. So this is taking me some time to kind of grasp, but doing the multi-threading and items, and we're gonna pass in host. Actually. There's some pretty good examples on YouTube about multi-threading. It's kind of how that's what's really helped me out. I'm gonna, but I don't know if you anybody's got experience with Ansible, but uh, that's that's where I see the weak point in Ansible is that it's just it takes so much time to do things, 
even if it's a small script, it's just a very time-consuming process. When you compare it side by side with something like multi-threading with Python, it's just really you can't beat it. So threading, thread, and our target's going to be that function up there. Um, and then those variables. One, two, yep. And then threads. Yes. Okay. So I think that should get get us going. Got our ta uh, our template, our YAML file, Python script with some multi threading. So basically now it's going to be sending workers to do everything at once instead of uh, waiting to do one at a time. So we'll, we'll start out with one configuration for one router and then we'll scale it out to two and then uh, you can kind of see the power of this here in a bit. Um, so I said we do Python program, so there's a Jinja file. And for this I think it makes sense to kind of do a side by side here. So if we jump into one of these routers, this is, this is kind of what I want to replicate here. This configuration for VPRN and uh, again for you Cisco guys, etc. This is a verf. So this is my template. So with your Jinja template you just take what you have, uh, a base template and uh, you know you add some code to it. So to see what a YAML file would be looking like. So let's say our host, this can be host. Um, I want to identify that host. So I do call this out in my Python script to extract this host IP. So the first one is 200.10.30, which is this router key. Oops, here's this guy, and in order to get into this configuration, you have to do, well, yes, configure service, VPRN, um, customer ID, great. So we'll have to start a loop here in a second. So a couple valuables and or a couple values in our dictionary will be host VPRN service. And then we'll do we're gonna need the VPRN ID. Okay, and then we're gonna need a customer ID. Um, so, description, say description, and we're going to need the autonomous system, the, I think that might be good for right now, we'll kind of get back to all this here in a bit, so we'll just this out. So, all right. First things first, we're gonna have to start a loop here. Let's say uh, for service inside the current by service, we are going to. Your service VPRN. So VPRN is going to be the VPRN ID. So I'll we'll pass that in there. Take that out and we'll say service.vprn and okay. And the customer ID will be customer ID here. 
Well, I'll replace that with custom customer ID. Create. So that should create the verb. And now description will be quotes. Copy that service uh, VPRN description. Now that'll pass that. So here we can say let's create VRF. Um, I don't know. Customer ID one. VPRN description. This is an automated de deployment. And the autonomous system, so 64500. So here, let's pass that in. Take that out. Oh, this is also important here. And service, autonomous system, PGP, AS. Okay, so route distinguisher, which we need, we will say. Yeah, so we'll replace our AS number with the code and our service ID for the route distinguisher. This was actually VPRN ID. And this will stay the same in verb target, so we can just reuse this code from here. So it's the same value. That should get us to a point where it will build this VPRN. Oh, actually, we have to close this for loop. So we'll say and four. All right. Save this. Save this. Pull down our shell. Make sure we're in there. And we're going to run this guy. Let's see if we made any mistakes. Okay, item. So object has no attribute item. Okay, so let's take a look. I will. It's hard to see on that screen. Read YAML items. Uh, it's not a problem. Let's see. Yeah, that may be working. All right, so I think I missed a space or something here. As you can see, something's not right. Configure service. So oh, I missed the uh, VPRN. Configure service 999. That doesn't work. Configure service. VPRN service ID. Okay, let's try that again. Alright, that looks a lot better. So here's my configuration not having. Okay, so another mistake here is this uh, no shutdown command. Looks like it's out of context. So you can see here, bad command. So we just need to get rid of this. And let's try running that again. Okay, that looks so much better. So now the service is built. So if we just open up this box, baby service, we said we PRN 999. Now it's built to configure this an automated perf deployment. So things are working. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe expand on this a little bit. Usually in your VPRN, you'd probably want to have some interfaces, loopbacks, uh, with some ports and descriptions, etc. So what we want to do is now add a nested loop inside our dictionary here. So. Let's call this interface name, and this name will be 
So interface one, loopback. We'll go to description. So birth nine nine loopback. And actually, this is kind of misleading here, so. Test interface. All right. Uh, so we need an interface name and, oh, interface description, not name. Then we'll say interface IP, the most important part. So this one we'll just say nine 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 slash thirty two. Um, so this is probably good for right now. Then we'll kind of start getting a little heavier into that configuration. So we'll create another for loop here. So I'll just kind of copy this here. But now instead of for service, we're gonna say for oh, and actually we got a half. No faces. Yes, that should make sense. So I'm going to loop through interfaces and I'm going to loop through all the items in interfaces and I'm going to loop through all the interfaces in each service. I'm going to loop through all the services in each host. Once we add more devices here, you see what I'm talking about. Um, so for service, uh, the, so for interfaces, so for interfaces and services, interfaces and VPN. So actually service interfaces. So for interfaces inside of my service, let's call out some of these keys. So to create an interface, let's say interface and call out interfaces. Uh, interface name. And we'll create the interface. Interface, interface name, test interface without create. Um, and then we'll say description. And we'll pass in the interface description. And of course, the IP address, which is going to say address. And that'll be interface IP. And that should be a good amount to get me going there. Oh, also, we need to, we need to end, we need to close this other for loop. So now we'll say no shut on this interface. And for, and then we'll say no exit, no shutdown. And for, let's see if that works. Should create a nope. Okay. So what did I do wrong here for interfaces in service interface and for Okay, so for interfaces in service dot interfaces interface in name. Description and uh, seems to be in quotes, anyways, even though it's not really the problem right now. Address, interfaces, P, and for, well, let me just dumb it down here a second. Oh, I know, come. 
Okay, let's see what's right here. Mapping buildings are not allowed here. Yeah, let's get our mapping line nine. Well, I didn't change anything, so except for those quotes. Okay, well, I'm not sure what that was all about. So so far so good. It looks like uh, we are configuring an interface, adding a description. We have an address in here. It's not shutting it, unshutting it, and exiting out of the configuration. So um, I did skip out on a shutdown here. So say exit, no shutdown. Uh, no shut. So yep, I'd be back at one level shutdown. So now some things to make it even a little bit more interesting is. This is not really a loopback quite yet. We look at the configuration on the device. Now there's this interface and this address. And uh, this kind of gives us some options here. Well, when you configure your VRF and your automated deployment, is that going to be a loopback or will it be a, a real interface with a service attached to it or a port or a SAP? Um, in this case, we want it to be a loopback. So so you can see it's currently down. So we'll say loop back. In this case, it will be true. And then, or we could say stop or port. And we'll say false here. So we'll go back to our code and, uh, after, let's see, address, interface, yep, so after here, we're gonna put in an if statement. So, we'll say, if interfaces loop back. So if this value is set to true or something's present in there, it'll pass that uh, variable. But since we're saying it's false, and we'll skip it. So loop back. So we'll end that if statement. And now actually for the port, let's recreate it. Um, if interfaces port, let's say, you know, pass in. Then here you would say, 4111 VLAN 200, something like that. And then that would be passed on in here. For that to work, he would say SAP, because this is a layer three uh, service interface. Um, so SAP. Interface port. Actually, you would say oh, it'd be a SAP. SAP interface port create. And I think it does make more sense for this to say SAP. Okay, so now we've got some options. Either this is going to be a loopback or it's going to be a SAP with a port number and a VLAN attached to it, etc. etc. So let's save that. And now let's just keep it honest here. There's nothing there. So now let's just run the, let's run the Python script. Takes a second. 
Okay, looks like it did say say loopback. So if we just review the code there, um, and there's loopback command because we did say loopback true. And if we want to play this the other way, we we'll say false. Take this out of here. Um, run that again. Hitting valid command, so there's probably something wrong with this configuration. So interface test. Uh, oh, so actually we would have to say no loop back. Now let's try that again. Sap. That's the problem. Also, don't need to say port. You just say the sap. Run that again. Valid port number encapsulation, and that's just because I chose a random port number that is probably not set to dot one key or it's set to Q and Q or no encapsulation. I'm not sure, but this is a lab environment, so who cares? And yeah, so now if you want to take it a step further. Say, let's do this across both of our devices. So router two, two thirty one. And let's just make a whole new one, just to verify everything's working. So configure service VPN. So we'll just go with uh, I don't know, seven hundred. So got a new customer. Uh, VPN seven hundred or vert seven hundred. We'll just keep this one for uh, ease of deployment right now because that's already created in the box. Um, and we'll just say this is a new birth brand spanking new. And so is this one. 700. Everything's going to be the same except for, let's say, Router one is going to be router one loop. This will be router one thirty two, and router two loop zero. This will be all right. So we're going to now take advantage of that multi-threading I've been so excited about. Let's go ahead and run it. And we should touch both of those devices here in a matter of seconds. And should return some output here. And then we'll log into each one and verify. We'll log into 230 first and make sure that that's in configuration is in there. And oops, missed something. Let's try that again. You know, now I'm kind of thinking maybe I do need that net disconnect. There we go. So we just configure both of them, uh, configure service and router one, and here's router one sandbox and router two configuration. As you can see, apply it on router two. So let's just verify that real quick. Uh, all right. So as you can see here, that's not in there. And what do we call it for 700? And it's there. All right. Here's my loopback router one loopback create. The new birth brain's making new. Let's go to router two. And description so is this one brand new birth created with its own loop back in a matter of seconds. So, um, there you have it. Um, hopefully, you guys can take this and tailor it to your needs and expand on it. And yeah, this is a network automation has been awesome to learn. Uh, I've got a great team at work that helps me out and teaches me stuff all the time. And uh, this network programmability and automation book with uh, Jason Oldman and Scott Lowe and Matt Oswalt, it's been real, really everything I've been reading recently. Um, so, yeah, hopefully uh, that definite exam comes soon and uh, take a stab at it. Thanks, everyone.